not so funny video of a tornado out of Wellington, Florida. We want to go over to Craig Herrera. He has more on Hurricane Milton and the severe aspect of this storm. Incredible pictures there, Craig. Yeah, and you know what? We were talking about this during the break, and Janice, we'll bring you in because you were talking about your friends and text messages coming in. This was very unique. We had the front come through, a lot of dryer on the backside. The environment was perfect. And what's unique about this is a lot of times with these tropical systems, they're quick spin-ups, mm. right? They're short-lived, they're quick spin-ups, and they're small and narrow. These were long-lived. They were coming out of supercells. Yeah. This is pretty unique to this storm. I, of course, he said every storm's different. But this was very unique. You know, one of the advisories that was coming in from the National Hurricane Center when I was on air yesterday, mm -hmm. the top line was supercells right. with tornadoes. And that was very unique with this storm system. Yeah. Yes, you can get some weak tornadoes that cause some structural damage. But, you, I mean, you're seeing tornadoes, wedge tornadoes that look like we were under a severe weather alert. Exactly. Yeah. It's more like a spring setup, right? Yes. The type of clashing of the air masses that we see in a spring setup. When you talk supercells, right smack in the middle can of I the Can I interrupt Absolutely. really quickly? Can you explain what a supercell is for the folks that don't yeah. understand what that is? Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those major storms that towers up pretty high, major in size as well, more convection within that as opposed to a quick little spin-up that's just a, a vortice, if you will, like we saw with uh, earlier on the northern Iowa. It's just a quick little spin-up. These mm -hmm. are these towering storms, pretty big. A lot mm -hmm. of these were actually low-topped, which is pretty unique, but the size and the scope of them is intense. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they produce those wedge tornadoes you were talking about, Janice, and a lot of them have a lot of rain, mm -hmm. dumping a ton of rain. So they were rain-wrapped and a lot of them were coming through during the afternoon. So it was tough to see them. And that that was a major concern as well. So while we got, look at the amount of tornado warnings, 126 tornado warnings wow. yesterday. This has to be top five of I, I think hurricanes you're right. producing tornadoes. That's crazy. I, I think you're absolutely right. And the, the problem here as well, and, and Janice, you know this, and Kevin, when we talk about this, all of these National Weather Service offices have these wow. teams, survey teams, that now have to go out and look at damage like this. Wow. Look at St. Lucie County. Wow. I was, uh, I was looking at a lot of the reports coming in from the National Weather Service, and a lot of these reports are coming in from St. Lucie County uh, throughout the entire county. And when you see something like this, look at the frame of that. That's like steel, just twisted and no. bent. One of these quick spin-ups is probably not going to do that. A supercell, that massive storms, could give you EF2s, EF3s, and they live a little bit longer. Now, we saw an EF3 in North Carolina with the last system that went through Helene, but it was one, and it was about a quarter of a mile long. It was the shortest path for a tornado in the state's history. But these storms, I think we're going to go back and look at it, see what the, the the length of it was, how big they were. And with the team spread out so thin, it's going to take some time to get the reports done, right? Because they have to make it out to the site. You think about the debris on the road. Yeah. Then they look at social media images. They look at the debris. And how they estimate the damage is they look at the tree, the tree bark, how much of that's been ripped off, the building materials, what did they use to make those buildings, and how much damage is done to those buildings. So all of this goes into factoring just how strong these tornadoes actually were. And look on the southern side of that. That's where that dry air got pulled right in. And, boy, ahead of that, we had all that warm, moist air, and it was just the perfect setup there. So did southeastern Florida really, I'm imagining, just looking at the map there, looks like uh, they've got a ton yeah. of tornado warnings, that part of the state in particular. Yeah, and you know what's interesting? They were coming in with those first bands, so a lot of them were coming from south to north yeah. with that. So the wind direction is going to be interesting with this one as well. So uh, when you look at that, that south portion of the, of the storm where that dryer was getting pulled in, that's where we saw a lot of that. And you can see southern Florida getting all of that. We saw them over to the west coast a little later. Later on, and we mm. saw the first ones before the sun came up. They were quick. As the sun came up, we had more instability. It helped the environment just produce these cells that produce these larger tornadoes. And I think you're right. Look at this tornado warnings, October 9, 2024, 55. Wow. So of there those. you have it. Incredible. I mean, when Stephen we study behind the after action reviews with these storms, that's going to be one of the things that we look at I think as you're science. Right. I think you're right. It was yeah. a big part of this. I mean, we had had the warnings and we were putting it out there, but I don't think that we realize the scope of just how big these tornadoes were going to be. It's really impressive. Look at the disparity, too. Just look a couple of weeks ago on the 26th of September, yeah. 16 right. compared to 55. Just incredible stuff. Craig, thank you.